Hey guys, Dow here from Dow's Rigging and Crane Tips. Before I start this video though, I just need to undo my shackle because I've done it up tight and the loads and I can't get it undone because I followed the impractical advice from the manufacturer's instructions. So give me 10 minutes so I can undo this shackle. I'm joking, I'm trolling you guys. You guys are right. I'm wrong. I admit it. All right. There's some hyped up dudes right now on the comments. Bro, bro. Nah, I'm joking. But look, welcome to Dale's Rigging and Crane Tips. I did do a video about rookie mistakes with shackles. Checks out the uh, rookie mistake was not doing your homework about shackles. So I thought I had this in a home run, man. I thought, man, this is the easiest tip I've given. Turns out, do your homework. What I said in a previous video was, when you do these threaded shackles up, threaded meaning for the new guys, they've got a thread here. When you do them up, do it up all the way, do half a turn back. I'd probably take that back and say quarter of a turn back. Um, people in the comments and the manufacturer's instructions say do it up hand tight and leave it hand tight. Now, what happens when you put it under load is it gets even tighter. So you'll have to have a spanner like I had or a hammer to whack it back the other way uh, to get it off. Now, the manufacturer's instructions are right. Okay, I'll concede. What it says in the manufacturer's instructions is that you do it hand tight and then obviously you'll have to use a spanner or a hammer to get it off. So. It's good that we're having discussion, this discussion on this page and people are pushing back because sometimes you get told things um, from old school people and they've been told them from old school people and they've been told them from other people and uh, it's just a common practice but sometimes common practices aren't actually right. So look, but I will push back a bit because it comes under certain factors with these shackles. So. I've got a bit of a long video here, but you know, let's explore it. There's some pushback, so let's do it. So my first question would be, manufacturer's specification versus practicality. Okay, let's look at it from this way. So manufacturer's instructions and specifications is from the manufacturer. And what manufacturers do is they want to cover their ass. What Lieber does is they want to put everything in at the top of the line safety to cover their ass. So if something comes back and an accident happens, they're not liable. That's the standing point of manufacturer's instructions. Yeah, it is. Now, in your country, in your state, in your site that you're working on, if it says to do these up tight, do them up tight. But there's different scenarios. So a high-paced environment, if you're in a high-paced environment, if you work in the city on a slew crane and you do six jobs a day, is it practical to do these up tight and have to undo them with a hammer and a spanner? It's probably not practical. If you've got an oil and gas job or if you've got a mining job and you've got one day a lift or one, one lift a week, is it practical to do these up tight and undo them? Yeah, it is because you've got all the time in the world. So. Those are some questions. Practicality versus uh, manufacturer's instructions. Uh, High-paced environment versus a uh, slow-paced environment. Another factor would be, um, is the shackle being used long-term on a fixed piece of equipment or is it just for one lift? Now, see, these are all the things which we'll have to think about when we're talking about shackles. So. Let's go over what the gurus in the comments said because um, I need to give them their props. Um, I need to give them their props. So shackle to shackle. I'll make, I'll make me smaller. I'll get me out of the way. There we are, guys. All right, back to this. Now. The screw pin thread shall be fully engaged and tight and the shoulder should be in contact with the shackle of the body. 
shoulder of the pin should be in contact with the shackle of the body. Thus, contrary to popular belief, you should never back off the screw pin before use. The shackle pin should be a minimum of hand tight before the lift begins. There we are guys. You guys are right. I was wrong. Didn't do my research. But like I was saying before, I keep saying but. <laughs> I sound like a dad who's never wrong. Yeah, but. Wah, 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 wah. But look. That's what it says in the manufacturer's instructions. Should you follow it? If you want. If you don't want, you don't have to. But let me have a look at the shackle again. If, if you do a quarter of a turn back, the shoulder's still touching. It's still touching, still pretty tight. So you're still following those instructions. Oh, you're not following those instructions. I won't say that because they say hand tight before the lift. So it depends on what you're doing. But then, I guess we would come over to this page and I'll get you a different type of shackle. So this is a different type of shackle. This is called the bolt and nut shackle. And um, the thing about this one, what I was reading, the thing I was reading about this one, bolt shackles can be used in any application where round pin and screw pin shackles are used. In addition, they are recommended for permanent and long-term installations and where the load may slide onto the shackle pin, causing the pin to rotate. The bolt type shackle secondary securement system utilized a nut and cotler. Cotler meaning that little um, safety pin which stops the nut coming off. Eliminates the requirement to tighten the pin before each lift or movement. So it eliminates, it eliminates the requirement to tighten the pin before each movement and load. So, the argument to say that the shoulder should be touching, should the shoulder should be touching the body of the shackle, is a rule for one shackle, but it's not a rule for the other. So I don't think that shoulder touching the thing is the shoulder touching the body of the shackle for this other one, for this one. How come that's a rule for this one? but it's not a rule for this one. And so if we leave that out of it, one can be loosely in here. This nut can be anywhere between the body of the, the, body of the shackle and the sleeper pin, but yet on the other side, it has to be tight. So I'm not sure why one pin can be sloppy and the other one can't. But maybe you can tell me in the comments so taking that out of it i think turning it back a quarter a quarter way just so it doesn't get tightened up and the application's a good idea but anyway so this type of shackle here because we want to get some tips in and we want to keep this informative this type of shackle here is one for a permanent type so if you've got a permanent thing uh like a man cage um what the hell is this? These aren't man cages. All right, sorry guys, wrong man cage. <laughs> if you've got a man cage, um, not the one before, uh, if you've got a man cage like this, these, these slings are gonna be permanently fixed forever. And so what you wanna use on man cages is you wanna use the bolt and nut type one because you're never going to take it off and this sleeper pin ensures that the shackle is going to be on there the whole time. If you're going to use spreader bars, oh yeah we got the same thing, oh Google, never heard of these spreader bars, um, what the heck, alright different type of spreader bar, if you're going to use spreader bars, these shackles on the spreader bars if the chains are going to be permanently on there, you want to use these nut and bolt type shackles. So these nut and bolt type shackles, they're fixed there. So which leads me to believe that as we were going on here before, um, you want to use these if the pin's going to rotate. So if the pin's going to rotate. So if we're using the screw type ones, 
by definition here, we shouldn't be using them on any load which screws the pin out or in. So you're never going to have that worry with those shackles. So the hazard of it unscrewing uh, isn't going to be there. So I guess my question is now is, the question I put out there is, with the screw type shackles from the start that I had, what is the hazard? Is the hazard the pin coming out? Or is the hazard the shoulder not being against the edge of the shackle body? What is the hazard? What, what, what are we looking out for here? That would be my question. Now, in saying that, um, two, if you're going to do these up tight, I would also say, let me get out of the way, I would also say here, if you're going to do those up tight and have to undo them every time, I would say you should mouse the shackles as well. Why not mouse the shackles to make double sure that it's not going to get undone? Um, unless that's not the hazard you're looking for. So I'll go back to the question. Write it in the comments. What is the hazard with having this a uh, quarter of the way back? If we're not going to use it on stuff which rotates the pin, and if it's the shoulder against the body of the shackle, if that's a hazard, what is a hazard? Because it's not the same hazard as this, as this other shackle. Because the other shackle, it doesn't have to have that tied up to it. So reading this, it's a bit confusing between both shackles. One has to be shoulder to the body, one doesn't. It can just be loosey-goosey. So that's it. But if you were going as far as to tighten these up every time, I'd say mouse them as well. And for the new guys here, mousing shackles means you get a piece of wire here and you tie it to that and then around the body of the shackle and then it can't unloosen, it's permanently fixed there. But if you're going to use a permanently fixed shackle for a permanently fixed thing, you're better off, you're far better off using these shackles here. Now, I'll get myself out of the way. You're far better off using the bolt and nut shackles. So, that's it guys. Um, let's keep this debate going. Um, Manufacturing instructions do say that uh, it should be hand tight. Practicality wise, it's not too practical if you're in a fast paced environment. Um, yeah, in saying that, in your country, in your state, in the place that you work, if that's a requirement, please do those requirements. Don't listen to me. I've been doing a quarter turn back uh, my whole career, 13, 14 years. I've never had a shackle undo. But just think about what you're doing. If the shackle's going to be there permanently, permanently fixed, um, use one of these nut and bolt ones. Um, if you're just doing one-off lift, uh, I've never had it undone. And if the pressure is not on the pin or stuff like that, I've done a quarter turn back. But look, just do what's safe for you. All right? Do what's safe for you. Another um, for the slew crane drivers. Now, slew crane drivers out there, uh, when you're driving the crane with counterweight, like this guy is, he's got his um, he's got his feet off the deck, and he's going to drive it forward and back. Manufacturer's instructions actually say that you have to have flat, hard ground, some eight, eighty tons per square inch of uh, of compacted ground underneath your tires. Now that's manufacturer's instruction. So that means there would probably be 70% of the lifts which require a crane to walk with the counterweight wouldn't be done. Because they're never done. They're never done on flat, smooth ground. It's unpractical. So that's another sort of you know, that's another uh, example of manufacturer's instructions versus practicality. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to go down a steep cliff with a crane, but it means that there's some times where we're on gravel and we're on a bit of an angle, but um, the crane's well equipped to do it, and it has done it, and any you know anyone who has moved these from one site to another um, has come across that. But you put things in place, you put practical things in place. So, now... Thanks to the new subscriber, Dan Walker, or Dave Walker.
Hey, bro. Brittany Fa Brittany Fan Francis. Michael Jones. Bryce Cox has a bit to say about these shackles. So just keep the talk up, guys. I uh, hope this video helps. I um, hope I've got something. So to the... So that's my question, really, with the shackle point. What is the hazard uh, that you guys are looking out for? The shoulder not being towards the body or the pin winding itself up? Anyway, to all the new guys out there, do what you think's right. If you need to tighten it up and undo it and you've got all the time in the world, yeah, do that. I've never had a problem the other way, but, you know, just follow what's in your heart, man. Um, do whatever. Thanks to the guys who commented. I really like it because it makes me explore these things first. So it makes me want to find out what the what the real, you know, it makes me want to learn more and it makes me want to find out what the real procedure is. So look, keep it going. And if you call me a cunt or if you call me some names, look, I got thick skin, man. It's all good. But it's good to have these discussions um, so people know, you know, we're not just working on old wives' tales or uh, what men have done before, you know what I mean? We work out what's real, what's practical, uh, manufacturing instructions, you know, um, and we sort it out through debate. So drop some comments in the comments. Uh, we'll, keep this, uh, we'll keep this debate happening and uh, all good. Like this video, subscribe here, Dow's Rigging and crane tips. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah.